So the lactational mastitis is the most common mastitis we come across in our day-to-day -day practice. And it is also called purpural mastitis. And the most common organisms are Staph aureus or Streptopyogenes. Now, this was a lactating patient who came with clinical features of mastitis. Of course, ultrasound has to be done as first imaging modality in these patients because they have pain, they have tenderness. And in this patient, we saw that there was an ill-defined collection on ultrasound, which was heterogeneous, and there was so much hyperemia. So in these patients, we can help them not only by diagnosis, but also by aspiration to decrease the amount of pathogen content in there body and the patient recovery is faster once they are put on antibiotics. So coming to the second subgroup under the simple mastitis that is non-lactational mastitis. So the index example I have purposefully taken from a male patient to make you people aware that yes even males can undergo mastitis. So this was a 48 year old male who was a diabetic and he came to me with a diffuse swelling on the right breast. And this was the mammogram and which showed diffuse increase in breast density with increase in decisional and trabecular margins. And on ultrasound, there was heteroechoic collection containing internal echoes and debris. And complicated mastitis, mastitis, as I have told, can be complicated with abscesses, draining sinus tracts, cysts in breasts can get complicated, galactoseals can get complicated. In these scenarios, the role of radiologists has increased not only to identify and characterize these infectious collections, but also to perform percutaneous drainages and for follow-up evaluations of these conditions. So beginning with breast abscess, which is a common complication of breast, uh, breast infection. So ultrasound is the first investigation because it is painless, allows us a regular follow-up after giving us a baseline examination, and also provides us guidance for percutaneous drainage, which is an easy procedure and can be done on uh, an outdoor basis itself. Now, a 40-year-old female came to me with a swelling of breast, had history of pain and fever, on MAMO, there was an equal density obscured mass in the upper outer quadrant of the left breast with few ipsilateral enlarged lymph nodes. And ultrasound revealed there was thin and subcutaneous thickening, edema, and fluid in the tissue planes. And target ultrasound at the site of that mass revealed a fluid collection with internal echoes. So an aspiration was carried out, a therapeutic aspiration was planned with an 18 gauge needle. So whenever we plan aspirations in breast, we do it with 18 gauge needles as opposed to core biopsies, which are done with 14 gauge needles in the uh, breast. So we should know this for, uh, for us that uh, it takes uh, 18 gauge, with 18 gauge needle, it is easier to suck out the fluid. And so in these subsequent sections, we can see that the entire abscess was aspirated and we can see coaptation of walls of the abscess in the last image. So Frank pus was aspirated and the patient was uh, thereafter kept on follow-up. And there was no filling in again because the patient was also kept on oral antibiotics. So coming to infected galactoseals, when breastfeeding is stopped, milk becomes stagnant and there the patient can develop an infected galactoseal after the formation of a normal galactoseal as well. So galactoseals, once they are infected, they behave similar to abscesses. So this was a young lactating mother who came with a swollen nipple areola complex just after weaning off her baby. So mammogram showed an oval circumscribed equal density retroareolar mass. The patient was very keen on a mammogram, so a mammogram was done prior to the ultrasound. However, ultrasound revealed a thick walled circumscribed heteroechoic collection, and so an infected galactoseal was kept on mind, keeping the history in view that she has just weaned off the baby, and again, 18 gauge needle was put in and it was aspirated and patient was put on antibiotics. Now, this is a normal galactoseal. This is the appearance of a of a galactoseal, how it appears when it is not infected, when it is sterile. So it has normally an anechoic or it might have some internal fine, um, fine internal echoes. And sometimes it may even demonstrate a fat fluid level wherein the fat has risen and it occupies the non-dependent part being lighter and water being heavier, it goes into the remaining, uh, the lower dependent part. And ultrasound guided aspiration sometimes has to be done for these galactoseals as these are very tense or painful or bothering the patient. So in this patient also we aspirated the galactoseal and got only milk and not pus as in the previous case. 
So the next case is a 58 year old smoker, again, a non lactational patient. So this patient was from Rajasthan and presented with a discharging sinus from this place as pointed by the arrow just adjacent to the nipple. So a mammogram was done, which revealed an equal density circumscribed mass enlarging the nipple and extending into the retroareolar location. And on ultrasound, again, we could see increased peripheral vascularity in a retroareolar mass. The mass was just underneath the nipple and it was draining out through the sinus that was there in the, uh, in the uh, area adjacent to the nipple. And again, aspiration was performed and a diagnosis of Zuska's disease was made, which was this collection draining out through the nipple areola complex via a sinus in a patient who was a smoker. So, Talking of central non peripheral abscess, which is synonymous in, uh, in a patient who is a smoker with Zuska's disease, which describes a condition of central non peripheral abscess associated with lactiferous fistulas, which form and drain out in or adjacent to the nipple areola complex areas. So, smokers, obese patients, and black races, these are more prone to have central non peripheral abscesses. So, the etiology lies that the squamous metaplasia occurs in the cuboidal epithelium, which leads to formation of these kind of keratin plugs. And this leads to stagnation and secondary infection and subsequently an abscess formation. So sometimes already existing cystic lesions in the breast like benign cysts or fibrocystic disease, sebaceous cysts or epidermoid cysts may also get infected. So this was a case of a 24-year-old male who underwent a diagnostic FNAC after he presented with a palpable breast mass. So on MAMO, we could see this well-circumscribed oval equal density mass close to the skin in periareolar location. And we could also see this undulation or extension from the inferomedial aspect of the mass, which was likely due to post-FNAC change. On ultrasound, they, again, we could see this was an oval equal density, oval circumscribed mass, which was parallel in orientation, which was just under the skin. And it had these characteristic hyper and hypoechoic rings, giving it the classical lamellated appearance, which is diagnostic of breast epidermoid cysts. Now, here I would like to tell that breast epidermoid cysts are by rats, two category lesions, and we do, do not need to put in a needle in this as it was put here prior to the patient presenting to our hospital and this led to inflammation of the surrounding breast we can see that there is this collection that is uh, there which is contained collection that is um, due to the post FNAC changes and also there is vascularity around the lesion due to infection so we should, as radiologists, learn to pick up these epidermoid cysts, which are taken en bloc by the surgeon. And these are no touch radiology, uh, no touch lesions for the radiologists. Uh, and these have classical laminated appearance and are skin based. <laughs>